Hey YouTube, there are a lot of apps that I have missed while I've been busy on App Kaiju, and I want to start going through my back pile uh, with Nano Studio 2's Obsidian synthesizer. Like, I'm not going to cover all of Nano Studio 2 because Jesus Christ this is a huge app, uh, but the uh, Obsidian synth is worth taking a look at. It's a really impressive synth that offers a lot of different features that make it easy to to illustrate things that are perhaps a little difficult for new synthesis to understand. It kind of hides everything underneath a lot of different panels. So it's not something I would recommend as like somebody's first synth, but definitely as their second synth. And since most of the people watching this are probably onto their 200th synth app by it uh, now, I'm not going to focus necessarily on uh, just newbie related stuff, but I'm going to highlight those features um, that I think are, are good at illustrating synthesis concepts uh but for this uh video i want to make a nice big thick van gelish kind of patch um one thing that's really nice uh about the way that a new project uh in uh nano studio starts off it gives you this mix panel that's already loaded up with a eq and a limiter now we don't want the eq but we do want the limiter so that uh, when we're doing all this uh, uh, patch designing, which can be really brittle and, and harsh on your ear sometimes, um, th this limiter is going to keep it from ever exceeding uh, the, the de decibel threshold that's going to start to be damaging to our ears. So that's nice. I love that that's just a standard input or uh, output uh, uh, plugin that's on our master bus. So let's get back to Obsidian here. And when you, you start off with a default patch, it is uh, very raw. Like that's as raw as it gets. And right now we're listening to only one of the oscillators. There are three and uh, they're all presently in analog mode. If I turn on the second one now, I can change it up to a saw. We got two saws, I can tune the second saw. And it's got good features in here for uh, you know, all of the things that you'd want from a synth like the sync. We can change this to an analog style sync. You'd make them both analog synced. That's already sounding uh, a little bit better than the, the just the plain saw all by itself. And we, we can decide to route each of these oscillators at either filter one or filter two or have them in parallel or do whatever we want with the, the filters. It gives us that kind of control over where we're sending our audio signal. But uh, for this, I'm actually going to leave it sending them both at filter one so that I can uh, shape it all in one go. And we, we might play around with filter two later. But... Uh, just pull down the really high notes, or the high frequencies. And from the envelope selector, this is on the amp envelope by default, which while I'm here, I might as well tweak. Uh, I want to reduce the sustain, increase the release. Never mind, I do not want to reduce the sustain. But you notice as I'm tapping on these, it's giving us the, the little dot on the knob and that shows us what we're controlling actively and what's being illustrated here on the the curves bar and if we um, have the release selected it's even giving us this arrow that we can drag up and down which is really cool so we can get a very fine tune um like an ease out of the uh uh release <laughs> And now we've also got the option to do something with the filter envelope, which is automatically assigned to the filter cutoff. And we can control that with the level. Let me just double check that, you know. Um, we assign it like this. So now it's pushing it past our cutoff frequency by this amount. 
Uh, I'll bring it way down so that it's more illustrative. So now we've got it completely cut off. And now this is pushing it past whatever the cutoff is by 50%. If I reduce the sustain, that'll be a little more obvious. Now that's useful, but uh, cutting off way too much for what I want to be doing. So I'm going to bring this way back. I'm probably going to be playing with that a lot more later. But uh, I want to move on to the LFO, which we can assign to all kinds of things, including whatever we want. And the same is true with the envelope. We can assign envelope 4 and 5 to whatever. But uh, in this instance, I am going to assign LFO 4. Um, oh, shit. I forget how to assign. Oh, yeah. Add to destination. Uh, <laughs> it gives you all the, the things that you can assign it to. And you just tap on any of these pluses. And for this, I'm going to assign it to the Q, which is the resonance of our filter one. And give it a lot of levels so you're going to hear what it's doing. So that's super weird the way I've got it going right now. But uh, I promise you this is going to be less weird in a second. Uh, we can change the, the behavior of this LFO. It lets you select, right, right now it's in this bipolar mode, which means it goes to the plus and the minus. We can make it unipolar half, so it's only doing the half of the cycle uh, that's above zero. So only the positive cycle. And we can also do full where it, it's making both halves positive. Uh, I really like the way that this half works out um, when we get into the uh, tempo syncing. So if we change this, you hear how it's only doing that weird noise um, for half of that uh, quarter note. And now I'm going to try to tame that so it's not doing that, that super weird squelch. I just wanted to show you what I was basically going for. Now we're going to do that in a much more reasonable manner. Uh, let me first try to tweak the cutoff and envelope so that those are sounding the way I want them to. And then I'm bringing, bringing the LFO that's going to be doing its thing. I was going to have to change a lot of things, but I'm actually really happy with how I've just kind of laid all that out. All right, so now I'm going to bring in the level of the LFO. And we're just getting a little bit of that zap. Like, instead of a zoo, it's a zap. We can sync this to the keys, make sure it's always zapping at the beginning of the uh, note hit. So that's great, but we've got a whole lot of other things in here. So let's try to layer this up uh, for this third oscillator. I'm going to bring this in and instead of using one of these analogs, I'm going to show you some of the other ones that are available to us. We've got FM wavetable and uh, even samples. Uh, I really like this nano saw that's in here. And you'll see, God, I wish I still had finger taps on my videos. Uh, it's iOS 12 and beyond has taken that away from me. Um, all right, next to this mix knob, we've got these bars, and that's giving us an illustration of the detune spread and its behavior. So let me turn off uh, filter, uh, oscillators one and two. So we're just listening to this uh, nano saw now. And as I increase the detune. I'm going to bring up the sustain on this uh, filter just so that we're listening to it fully while I'm screwing around with it. It's doing a great job of, of illustrating that, but we can also um, see how some of these uh, unique controls are affecting things. So the detune is affecting how far from our note those individual voices are coming. So 
does it tell us the number now? It's just giving us a percentage. Uh, but we can also do things like uh, change the fall off. So that the the detuned portions that are further from our the furthest from our uh, root note are not as loud as the others. So it's giving us a, a greater emphasis on, on what's going on in the center of that. If we reduce the spread, we can further emphasize that central portion. Now if we do tune a little bit more. It's a little too much. So that, um, let me turn this off because that's kind of getting in the way of things. It's not going to the filter. Oh, there we go. That's just a lot of very low end stuff going on there. All right, so that's a really big, thick, rich thing that we we're dealing with. I'm going to bring down sustain now on the envelope that's controlling the filter, bring back in oscillators one and two, and we're going to try to make this big, thick nano saw thing um, work well with our other saws uh, and try to make something that sounds kind of sci-fi and epic. down this decay it's quite long already change the shape of that curve a little oh yes let's bring back in just a little bit of our uh, zapping take out the other two oscillators so I can hear what we're dealing with now just from the nano saw. So yeah, that's that's exactly where I wanted that to be. That's a nice, rich thing. Bring up the level a bit. All right. Um, yeah, with the chords, it's very thick. Now I, I need to make the first two oscillators work well with that. Bring those back in. Um, I think my step one on this is going to be to uh, tune the first one down a lot. Um, hmm. Yeah, I'm just going to straight up transpose this down. And since we're already doing a lot of detuning, I think what was sounding really good before when we just had the two saws, having another one that's just kind of off on its own is just kind of weird. So I'm going to detune this one another six. So we're going half an octave and then a full octave down. That's a really growly one. Let me emphasize that for you. So now with just the two analog oscillators, we got that mean growly one and then a more calm. Um, Yeah, I like that. So let's bring now the nano saw back in. And all together. Now it's a little it's a little messy with a uh the deeper saw.
been a while since I've been using the keep the iPad like this. I'm kind of flailing around, but you get the idea. This is a very nice, thick sound. I'm I want to use this second oscillator. I mean, we've got the oscillator. We might as well use it, right? Um, I feel like this video is going to get really, really long if I start to explore some of the other things, like the FM. That it's going to double the length of this video. So let's try hitting a square wave here. All right. So in a very roundabout way, I've uh, made a square sub saw for longtime viewers of the. <laughs> Let's Play series, you'll know that that's my basic go-to for whatever uh, patch isn't quite getting where I want it to be. Throw in a deep, yeah, this is deep, a deep uh, saw that's being heavily cut off uh, with the filter. Gives us a nice, big, deep presence. It's gonna sound good with this. And it also sounds good with this. I feel like my zap might be too zappy. Yeah. call it there. I hope that this video has been informative. Like seriously, this is a free synth that comes with Nano Studio. Nano Studio itself is not free. It's like, I think it's 20 bucks or something. It's a lot, but it, it includes lots of goodies in here and you can immediately add in, like it's got its own built-in effects that we haven't even begun to explore, but it's, this is a full AUV3 host. So you can now route this through however the hell you want to route it. Uh, it's, it's a very serious synth that's just given away as part of the, the, the package here. And it's got these performance controls that you can assign. Uh, it's, it's really good. I uh, hope that this video has been informative. Take it easy, folks. Oh, shit. I, I nearly forgot to thank all my patrons. Like, I've got so many patrons to thank. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you can tell I'm out of practice on this. Uh, so... For anybody who's been on the fence about whether or not they want to support uh, this series or, or what I'm doing with Discord, or you just don't want to do anything with Patreon, I now have a Timmy on, uh, which is available uh, on the Discord site now. Uh, if you click on the support link, there's an option to uh, become a Timmy on, which is uh, my own uh, payment processing through Braintree. Uh, so if you, you don't like any of the other options. There's that option. Um, and everybody, it doesn't matter how you're supporting me. Everybody gets thanked at the end of this video and you get ad free, uh, viewing of the, the website. So, uh, Timmy ons, Patreons, everybody is, is greatly appreciated by me as a patron. So thank you very much guys. Take it easy.